Yeah, everybody, and first of all, thank you for your participation at this uh, EC2I Smart Tech uh, webinar dedicated to the U.S. clean tech market and um, matchmaking mission in September. Uh, today we are uh, close to 60 participants, registered participants for this webinar, which uh, shows uh, a strong interest for, for the, the thematic. The, the program of today is the, the following. Uh, Mark from the Smart Tech and myself from uh, the EC2I delegation will uh, first present you our project and uh, the matchmaking mission uh, in New York City and Boston. And uh, after, we will then have the, the opportunity to listen to uh, five uh, experienced speakers, uh, Bridge Innovation Partners, Hudson Russ, Nizerda, World Climate Limited, and uh, Enrich. They will uh, share the vision of the U.S. market, of course, and will provide some uh, advices to startup or SME wishing to export their product or services to the United States. Um, it will be a bit difficult because each speaker will have a, a maximum of uh, 10 minutes. Um, and after the present presentations, uh, we will have also a bit time for questions and answers. Um, yes, now let's start. Um, first, a little presentation uh, of the EC2I uh, delegation. We are five uh, leading European clusters from uh, Austria, Belgium, Denmark, France, and Sweden active uh, in the clean tech sector. And um, we are organizing for uh, matchmaking missions um, in China and the United States uh, between uh, European SMEs and foreign uh, partners. Uh, why these two, two countries? Uh, just because they are uh, the present wide market and great business uh, opportunities for clean tech uh, export. And um, the mission in September in the United States will be uh, the, the, last mission, the last mission for uh, our project. Um, Mark will now uh, briefly uh, present uh, you um, the Smart City Tech Project partnership, Mark. Yes. Uh... Hello, everybody. So I'm uh, Mark, Mark de Kovner from uh, Smart City Tech, uh, and I have the honor to uh, present or represent uh, all the partners within this uh, partnership. It's, uh, Smart City Tech is a uh, so-called cluster partnership with a focus on everything related to technology and implementations of technology in urban areas. Huh? So we really want to uh, drive uh, the application of uh, this type of technology in the urban areas forward. Huh? We are uh, consisting out of uh, currently 10 leading European clusters uh, from uh, Scandinavia, uh, Germany, Belgium, France, Spain, Portugal, Italy, and in total we are uh, representing uh, more than, uh, than 3,000 uh, companies or generally spoken stakeholders, so as well academia as, uh, uh, as companies. Huh? So, and our main objective is, as I said, is to, to see how we can uh, develop collaboration on tech implementations in urban areas uh, in Europe between the participating uh, clusters in Europe. Huh? But uh, with Smart City Tech, we also go abroad uh, to other continents. Uh, that's also the reason why we teamed up with uh, EC2I to, uh, to come to uh, uh, the US in, uh, in September. Uh, but uh, later this month, next week, we are also traveling to Singapore so that we really uh, yeah, uh, cover uh, also a uh, big part of, uh, of the world with uh, interesting uh, and, and, and lies with interesting stakeholders in the smart city tech domain. That's in a few words. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mark, for, for this presentation. Uh, yes, if um, we can also maybe uh, summarize uh, the main objective of the, the EC2I project, uh, it will be the, the following. Uh, Firstly, to uh, support uh, innovative uh, SMEs to develop their activities into a large and uh, dynamic clean tech uh, and smart city foreign markets. Uh, secondly, to bring solutions to uh, current global challenges uh, facing uh, in the urban area. 
And last but not least, uh, to uh, build a strategic partnership with stakeholders uh, and uh, identify local market uh, opportunities. Um, this is uh, some pictures of, um, of the delegations of uh, EC2Y uh, and uh, Smart City Tech, the, the consortiums. Uh, on the left, you can see the five uh, clusters uh, of EC2Y. With, uh, I'm from the cluster Tweed, and uh, on the right, the, the, the different clusters of Smart City Tech and our markets from uh, DSP Valley. Uh, now, maybe the, the, the most uh, important part from this introduction, the, the matchmaking uh, mission uh, in uh, mid-September uh, in New York City and Boston. Uh, this mission will uh, last five days. Uh, the two uh, first days uh, will combine uh, conferences, speeches, and B2B meetings. Uh, the first day uh, in New York City, um, we will have a welcome session presentation of U.S. cooperation uh, like, uh, for example, uh, Siemens or Con Edison. And we will also, of course, have uh, SMEs, uh, pitches, and, of course, uh, B2B meetings. Um, Bridge Innovation Partners uh, is helping us to arrange the, the B2B meetings uh, with the help also um, of the, the Swedish American Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this is uh, for the first day. The second day, on Tuesday, we will uh, have a city uh, challenges uh, day. Uh, Nizera will, uh, for example, give us a presentation about the New York State uh, transition plan, and uh, the New York City Major's Office of the CTO will uh, take part to the workshop and B2B meetings. And uh, yes, last but not least, for the, these two days, we will also maybe uh, participate to uh, a robotics uh, industry event with uh, Enrich, but uh, Enrich will uh, give us uh, a little explanation about this after. Um, Wednesday will be a travel day to go to, uh, to Boston. We will uh, take the train in the morning, have some free time in the afternoon to walk or uh, to visit uh, a little bit. And uh, in the evening, we will uh, already participate to the Horizon 19 reception and have uh, a networking um, event, uh, uh, yes, in the, in the evening. Um, and after the, the last two days, uh, we will have uh, a matchmaking mission in Boston, of course, uh, with the Horizon 19 conference. Um, World uh, Climate Limited will uh, present us uh, during this webinar uh, a bit after the, the Horizon 19 conference uh, in detail. Um, and of course, on Friday, at the end of the mission, we will have a fly back uh, to uh, Europe or to uh, Canada. Uh, this is the, the B2B, uh, B2B tool that we will uh, use for mission. It's a, a well-known B2B tool. And uh, with this one, we will be, uh, you will be uh, able to uh, set up a profile, uh, request meetings, and uh, also build a connection, of course. Um, our mission is related to many uh, clean tech subsectors, like, for example, of course, uh, energy efficiency uh, or waste uh, management, and uh, will involve different kinds of actors. Uh, the purpose of this slide is, in fact, only to, to show that there is uh, a place uh, for a lot of innovative uh, SMEs. Um, the cost of the mission is estimated at uh, 1,500 uh, euro without the flights and uh, accommodation. And um, why to join the mission? For different reasons. Uh, first, uh, we will uh, have uh, many B2B meetings with large American corporations regarding their current challenges in New York City and New York State. Uh, I have already uh, 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 talked about uh, Siemens and Con Edison. Uh, secondly, we will uh, also have a U.S. partner pre-screening with uh, Bridge Innovation Partners. We will have uh, other meetings with public uh, New York City and New York State uh, representatives uh, re regarding city and state opportunities. We will have 
uh, entrance, of course, at the uh, Horizon 19 conference in Boston with pitching and B2B meetings with global leaders like this one. We will have a networking between also the European SMEs and also the Canadian SMEs. We will uh, share uh, a market knowledge on the, the northeastern region of the US. And uh, last but not least, we will have, of course, a great visibility for each company in the US market. Um, last slide for, for this introduction. Um, on this slide, you can see uh, American uh, corporations, so Siemens and Connecticut, and also two public uh, representatives. Uh, Nizerda and New York City major office of the CTO. And for these four actors, you have uh, some focus areas and challenges. Uh, this is only some example of uh, key, uh, yes, challenges or focus area that can be useful for, for your activities. So don't hesitate to uh, have a look at these and uh, maybe to, yes, the purpose to have an idea of the kind of topics that can be discussed during the B2B uh, meetings. Uh, now, uh, we will give the floor to uh, Bill and Tarek uh, from uh, Bridge Innovation Partner Offers. Uh, maybe I can ask them to share their screen uh, already, and I will briefly present already uh, Bridge Innovation Partners. So it's, uh, BIP is a strategic corporate development firm that uh, sponsor and promote uh, growth company to the, the stage of commercialization and internationalization in the United States. Uh, perfect, I see that now the, the screen uh, is shared. Um, William and Tariq, uh, thanks for, for being with us and uh, we are now looking uh, forward to your presentation. Great, uh, thank you for the intro, let me just do this so we can see it properly. Um, you can see the screen, I take it? Yes, yes we can. Yes, we can. Okay, you know, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do it like this here, sorry. Uh, presenter view. Okay. No, sorry. Let me, okay, I want to, yeah, right there. Okay. Let's try like this. So good. Um, you know, good afternoon, everybody. Pleasure to connect with you all and uh, pleasure also to continue the cooperation uh, with the cluster organizations led by uh, EC2I, um, uh, who we've been in discussions with, I think, for um, several months now, maybe at least six to seven months. So, um, you know, we, we really look forward to trying to support this organization, supporting the clusters and supporting this process. Uh, what I'd like to do is give you about five minutes uh, on the presentation background and who we are and then allow the rest of the time for Q&A since I think that that actually may be the most valuable uh, part of all this. Uh, so quick background on the company. Uh, it was actually uh, established in China. So I know you mentioned China and the US is the two markets. Um, we were set up in China in 2008. Uh, I was based there in Beijing at the time and our uh, business model was based on taking SMEs from the US and then later uh, from Sweden and the Nordics um, into China. Uh, we eventually got a grant from Venova and set up a, an office in, uh, in Sweden as part of this effort. Um, and nowadays we continue to do some of the into China business, but we're actually more focused on bringing companies into the US uh, and actually vice versa, bringing US companies into Europe. And we'll talk a little bit about that bridge that we've built. Um, but in terms of history, you know, we're, we're a decade old plus uh, and have been just doing internationalization. And, and I'll tell you a little bit more about what that means um, means to us. In, in the context of uh, the, the clean tech uh, and, you know, the, the companies we're looking at within Europe, uh, we have looked at some research to get some context as to what's the situation analysis. We see here that internationalization, especially for companies that have small domestic markets, uh, is something that increases competitiveness, but there are challenges. And so when you think about the um, types of services that we offer, and we'll get into that, we're addressing some of these challenges, specifically, you know, the human resources challenge, the funding challenge, and the business connectivity challenge. And, and I'll get into those a little bit more. But the key for you to understand is that our business model was created specifically to help small and medium-sized companies internationalize and we've tried to make that um, 
uh, an actual business model uh, focused on that, and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit further. The, the two things that we do, well, well, just you know, quick background. Basically, it's myself and Bill as the leaders, both former entrepreneurs, various backgrounds from finance uh, into software, um, into uh, sales, business development. We've both sold companies um, and have focused on, on building this. Uh, the, the main legs of our platform are, are two things. One is helping you identify why you're trying to go to that market and what are your goals, and then who are the end customers that you want to connect with, whether they're distributors or whether it's the end user for whatever, whatever your product is. Um, so it's really, I would call landscaping, you know, let, let, let's map out sort of where you want to go and who should be the end point, and then facilitating and implementing that, and much of the time that, that requires finance. And, and so our model really has these two legs as the main parts of it. There's other things that we do around strategic consulting and what have you, but it's really about understanding where you want to go in the market, what's the right structure and what's the right way to finance it. Um, this talks a little bit about some of the, the key things. I'll skip through this slide. Um, this is the one I, I want to focus a little bit more time on. So uh, earlier I referenced a business model. We call it IASS, which is basically internationalization as a service. Uh, and it really focuses, as I said, again, on sort of understanding where you want to go and establishing the right network there and local ecosystems. And I think this platform um, with this trip in September is really good towards that goal because you're connecting with NYSERDA, you're connecting with industry. So you've got government, you've got industry, you've got the private sector, uh, and you've got some service providers like us. So with that, it's really about trying to build the right ecosystem for you in that local market once you understand what your goals are. Uh, another point here to think about is it's not really just about capital. So capital in itself uh, is useful, but capital within the context of internationalization means something quite different. Uh, and I can talk a little bit more about that in the Q&A, but uh, when you look at going into these other markets, uh, you should have capital to budget for the project management of going to the market and for implementing the strategy, but it's not really a place to go seek capital for your local domestic purposes if that's the only purpose, right? So it's got to be capital for the purposes of internationalization in a strategic context, not a place to go get capital. So in, in China, this happens a lot where companies just go there because they think there's money uh, without thinking about what's my China strategy. And that's, uh, that's a mistake and can lead you a long path. This is a little bit about the way uh, we have built our platform. So you know, getting into this, I'll describe that basically we've built an index, which we call our readiness index. So companies would first take a small survey and that would help us understand where do you sit in your analysis of looking at the market. And this will say things like, you know, do you uh, understand why you're going to the market? What are some of the risks? Do you understand the human resources requirements? What are the cultural differences? What's IP? Uh, what's regulations around importing and logistics, uh, all of these things. Do you have a pricing analysis? So we just want to know how competent you are uh, in thinking about this. And you, know, you don't have all the answers, but if you're starting to think about them, I think that's sufficient. And then what we do is after we take some of the results of this, we talk you through a process which is really about proactive, long-term engagement uh, around ecosystem building locally with the right partners. Uh, that align with your strategic goals, right? Because at the end, internationalization is about one of the strategic goals of the business. It's not the strategic goal of the business. It's one of. So whatever you do uh, within the context of going to another market, it has to be strategic, not opportunistic. And that's something that's really important, especially as your businesses grow and you have to manage your resources in a really transparent and accountable way for investors and for the government. You've got to think about, is going to another market strategic or is it opportunistic? And that oftentimes will define uh, the kind of resources you want to put forth and also the impact that your strategy will have on the business. So th this is again basically reiteration. So initially what we'll do is we'll sit down with you with the survey. We'll think about a plan. You know, why are you trying to be there? What are we trying to do? We will then map that out with you and create a, an action plan through a Gantt chart, which says here are the key partners for you to get, your hold, get a hold of. Um, you know, some of them will be government, some of them will be corporate, some of them will be key, key opinion leaders, and we'll take you basically on a roadshow to meet some of these groups and help you, you know, prepare for that in terms of collateral material as well as talk you through uh, how to conduct those meetings. Ultimately, the goal will be to strike, you know, to strike a deal, whatever your deal looks like, and it could be multi-phased as well. And then the third part is um, 
what we call operate. So it really means you want to launch your actual localization plan. So oftentimes that means you have already you know, done your deal or you know, executed whatever partnership you want. And now it's about maintaining and extending and leveraging that partnership and all of the principles that go around that. And uh, we have some things in there, including risk mitigation, which we can talk you through. Um, the other part of this uh, is something we do. This is more on the consulting front, but it's relevant because it aligns with internationalization is what we call our SIO methodology. Basically, uh, what it breaks down to is strategy, implement, operate. But basically, what it comes down to is when we look at a business, uh, we tend to bring financial metrics into the thinking of that business. Uh, and ROE and ROIC uh, are things that to us are quite relevant when you think about your business and specifically when you think about internationalizing. Um, because everything in our mind needs to have uh, some tie back to the strategy of the business and you should budget for that strategy. And so for us, that means that when you think about internationalizing, have you thought about what your financial metrics are? Like, where are you trying to go? Is there a return on the investment here? Uh, is there a return on the equity to your shareholders? Because at the ultimate, at the end of the day, you got to think about your shareholders. That's where it all really comes down to. So this is another methodology we have, along with the internationalization as a service methodology, which allow us to really get forensic in looking at your business and kind of assess what we think uh, would be the best way for you to execute some of your cross-border strategies. And all of this we will bring to the table so you can have better knowledge and a, a better uh, view of the potential operational footprint that you might need. And I guess that is it as far as this presentation goes. So I will stop sharing that. Um, and I tried to rush through that a little bit, but the goal was really to give you the sufficient overview. Um, and uh, hopefully I did that in a good time. And now we're open to you know any questions that you might have about that. Um, the last thing I might mention to you, just in, in case people are interested, is basically uh, this is a model that's mostly success-based. So a lot of these things we will do uh, as part of the relationship. Uh, and then once we get into you know executing a deal, in so much as you want us for that part, uh, then we, we can figure out the right economics for that. Uh, and within the context of what we're doing here, uh, basically we will support the companies coming on this mission by connecting with you on the phone, uh, trying to understand what your goals are for the mission and ensuring that we can help them uh, come true as much as possible. And again, it's just, it's an included service in this mission. So we will make all these intros to you in so much as you want to, you know, engage us going forward, that would be a separate conversation and outside of this scope. Um, and we can talk about that offline if there's an interest. But what we will do is ensure that you try to get the best meetings that align with your objectives and goals for the mission. And if, and if I just might add, this is Bill. Um, it looks like we're right on time with 920 but, uh, or 320. I just wanted to add um, that uh, this may sound cliche, but we do approach this uh, as partners. Um, we, uh, uh, we kind of look at this as if we're, we're part of, uh, each, in, in each conversation, like we're part of the team in a way, so that we're together trying to problem solve and trying to understand not only if, but when the right time for internationalization is. Um, and we have a very practical approach, and our mindset is around growth, like Tarek mentioned earlier. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think uh, with that, um, uh, I guess uh, we don't have time for questions, but um, um, we'll be here uh, throughout and we'll be available after uh, the formal presentations. Yeah, thank you, Bill. If, if I might just make something here, Frederick, here from Copenhagen. Uh, just, just two things. First of all, there will be questions at the end, and we will ask you some questions, Bill and Tarek. Thanks for a very good presentation. There will be uh, following up questions. So, so, so thanks for that. A second thing is that there is, apparently we have a limit to the number of participation. Uh, Dan, are you on the call? Dan Spitzer. Dan, Dan, please unmute yourself. You are muted. Okay, so maybe. I'm not muted. Oh, no, it's okay. Sorry. Yeah, I'm really not muted. Uh, so you can hear me now, yes? Yes. Good. I'm ready to go whenever you are. Yeah, let's go. Let's go now then. Yes. 
Okay. Um, I'm assuming that you uh, you have the slides uh, put up. We had a, I had a little bit of problem getting into the webinar, which is wonderful news because it means the webinar is full. Uh, but you have the slide in front of you. What I want to take you through today is some very specific things about why you should be looking at the New York and the American market. Um, the opportunities are outstanding. The next slide, please, the one that says carbon be gone at the top of it. I know if you're uh, overseas or even in America, you've read a lot about the American presidency uh, being opposed to addressing climate change, to being pro-coal. Pay no attention. Um, the states have always been the leaders on energy matters in the United States, and the states even the conservative states are moving ahead. The reality in America is the renewable energy manufacturing sectors are almost entirely in Republican red states and very strong supporters. Uh, we have a number of states that have actually mandated a 100% requirement. New York currently mandates 50% renewable energy, and tomorrow they're going to pass a law that takes it to 85% by uh, 2030. Um, the business opportunities in this sector have simply never been better. Next slide, please. Uh, what I want to do is talk you through some of the things that are really going on. New York has really put in place a real Green New Deal. And you know there's an American expression that money talks. Well, New York is really talking. Um, New York has put together significant funding, both private and public money through ratepayer money, to move the state to a 100% carbon-free economy by 2050. Uh, New York already had a low density of carbon use because of its um, sub, frankly, because of the New York City subway system and the density in New York State. However, they're really investing. So so far, New York has already invested 2.9 billion dollars in 46 large-scale renewable projects across the state. That's mostly wind and solar, but it's also some other projects. Um, they're looking at some very intriguing ones now. New York is doing a lot of commitment, and I want to go through some of those things. But what Hudson Russ has done is we've helped a number of foreign investors and a number of foreign companies take advantage of that. A significant amount of the money that has gone to these projects has gone to European companies that have the technology that New York wants and America wants to move forward on climate change. And there, we're, we're, we're seeing the regulators put their force behind it. Next slide, please, the one that's the second one on the Green New Deal. So New York created a 10-year, $5.3 billion clean energy fund. This comes from ratepayer money. It's not from uh, taxpayer money. As a result, it's controlled by the Public Service Commission, and it's controlled by the governor, as opposed to having to go through annual appropriations. That really takes a politics out of a lot of the funding. And any of you who have been involved in funding know that the more you can move the politics, the better. The New York State, the New York Green Bank, for example, which is a core component, this is an entity that's already earning money for the state, and they had $637 million in investments. They're now raising over a billion dollars in third-party funds to finance availability. This is the opportunity for your companies that's very real going on in New York right now. Going on to the next slide, I want to talk about some of the specific opportunities. A few years ago, I was at a conference held by City State Magazine, and the head of sustainability for the city was talking about, right now we have a series of laws that are really based on volunteering to address emissions from buildings. Because of New York City's subway system, the reality is that buildings make up 71% of New York City's uh, greenhouse gas emissions. That's lower than other communities, uh, which are more transport-focused. Uh, so they've been focusing both on the Mayor Bloomberg and the current council has been a little slow until two weeks ago. Last two weeks ago, New York passed the Climate Mobilization Act. If you have a company that is involved in energy efficiency, planning, planning energy resources, you anywhere along the scope of energy reduction, this is an unbelievable opportunity. These seven laws require that emission caps be set for buildings over 25,000 square feet to reduce emissions by 40% by 2030 and by 80% by 2050. There is no more ambitious energy legislation, and this is legislation, this is the law, this is not a guideline, this is not a policy, this is you will do this in the most successful real estate market in the world. And it requires an assessment of the feasibility of, of, of replacing the city's uh, gas-fired plants. There are 12 gas-fired plants that they want to replace with battery storage for peaker use. They want to look at uh, smaller buildings. They have a, a financing mechanism. Next building, please, under build, uh, still, uh, next slide under buildings. 
um, the total cost requirements to meet this goal of $4 million billion of money that's available. You're going to hear from NYSERDA today. NYSERDA has significant opportunities in regard to um, program efficiency. They have a specific program, the, the new efficiency in work program, with a target of reducing end-use energy savings below the 2025 energy use forecast. This is money that's available from the absolute number one agency in the country at actually using ratepayer funds to generate uh, to actually generate projects that address climate change. I know you're going to hear next from uh, a couple of the representatives on a couple of the projects. But this is a significant uh, project uh, dollar base where what the state has done, the city has done, is put regulations in place that now the private sector has to fund. And while there's some public money available for this, a lot of this is private sector money that's available to do this. Next slide, please. Another opportunity is an offshore wind. The east coast of the United States is not kidding around about offshore wind, and New York in particular has set up a goal of 9,000 megawatts of offshore wind by 2035. There's a bill pending in the New York State Legislature called the Climate Protection Act, uh, or of a similar name, that's actually going to enshrine this number in, in uh, legislation. You're talking about an industry that doesn't currently exist in the United States. You have one wind farm that was built by a company now owned by Orsted. Um, the uh, first tender in New York for 800 megawatt has received bids. It's going to be announced soon. This is going forward. Massachusetts is procuring 1,600 megawatts, and literally every phase of the um, supply chain is in play. The entire industry has to be created. I was at a conference last week, the uh, U.S. Offshore Wind Conference. You had everybody there from engineers to uh, the folks who do the boats, the folks who provide meals for the people on the boats. There is an incredible opportunity, and it has been estimated by, uh, to be a $68 billion industry by 2035. That is a significant opportunity for companies. And obviously what Europe has to offer is you're way ahead of us on offshore wind and making use of offshore winds and finding ways to uh, employ the renewables into the grid, grid solutions. Um, so this is a tremendous time for the clean tech sector in Europe to be looking at America. Turning to solar, solar many of you may already be used to. Many of our uh, uh, solar projects and solar and storage projects are already have a European base. The $1 billion New York Sun Initiative has already uh, facilitated a 1,500% 1, increase in solar deployment. And uh, the New York City law I mentioned is now trying to use smaller rooftops, but there's a significant effort to take advantage of uh, community solar programs so there, there's a recent order that came out from the Public Service Commission that increases the funding. There is $1.5 billion available for funding support for large-scale solar. In addition, NYSERDA currently has a specific program available, $40 million for solar and storage projects. I think one of the companies you're going to hear from later today has significant experience in advising on the storage and, and has some storage projects going on in New York State. Storage is obviously the holy grail that um, we've been talking about in renewable energy for a long time. It has come to be technically. The prices are continuing to drop. It is now a situation where solar and storage is, is, is almost at grid parity in a lot of areas. Yes, the low cost of gas has held back renewable growth somewhat. We're overcoming that, and NYSERDA and New York State are making real gains by funding these things until the markets catch up. Um, Related to this is energy storage, as I mentioned. Next slide, please, the energy storage slide. Uh, the energy storage market is expected to reach $4 billion in the next six years. Um, a lot of this is because the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which governs wholesale activity as opposed to retail activity, which is managed by the states, issued an order designed to remove reforms, excuse me, designed to create reforms to remove barriers to Energy storage, we now have a situation where energy storage, if it qualifies, can literally bid into the grid like any other uh, commodity generator. Uh, obviously, storage is very unusual because it can both use and deploy energy, but New York has taken a, uh, a, a very uh, specific step. They have a program at 1,500 megawatts of storage by 2025 and up to 3,000 megawatts by 20, 
2030. They are not just putting this out there as a goal. They are providing funding for retail and bulk market storage incentives. There's hundreds of millions of dollars being put forward. The state specifically said in some of its comments to FERC about the NISO, and they don't feel that their own grid operator is moving fast enough, but the state said, listen, it's going to take a while for the market to catch up. We are going to provide the difference. And if you're in the energy storage business and a successful entrepreneur in that business, and particularly with some of the new solutions that are coming online, this is an outstanding opportunity. Next slide, please. Um, transportation, although transportation tends to get a lower focus in New York because of the subway system having, um, a, uh, if you will, a great effect on reducing our GHG footprint, um, transport still accounts for roughly a third of GHG emissions across the state. And it is still a significant con contributor. You may be aware that New York State this year enacted, on behalf of New York City, a congestion pricing uh, scheme that has not gone into effect yet. The lawsuits haven't hit yet, but we'll see. Uh, we're expecting it to go into effect, and it's been very effective in other cities, and we're hoping it will be here too. But the state isn't just looking at congestion pricing. It's also looking at giving a real shove to EV vehicles. The state has for a long time had incentives for electric vehicle cars. There's a $250 million Evolve program to expand fast charging along key corridors, establish the airports as charging hubs, establish model communities programs. Some of this is being done with a compact with other states. And all of this, uh, the e-mobility, all of these programs are dependent on attracting um, uh, battery solutions and other solutions and really improving the way EV works as we move into um, uh, now we're looking at uh, EV solutions related to um, uh, freight vehicles as well as passenger vehicles, significant opportunities to address climate change this way. And really, if you're anywhere along that supply chain in the e-mobility from apps all the way through, there's, one, there's actually a European car manufacturer who has an incubator in New York and they have some 55 companies there, and they're all working on apps and other non-physical solutions to mobility issues. Um, significant investment. Uh, next slide, please. Staying with transportation, there's a number of uh, specific uh, uh, pro pro excuse me, programs designed uh, for EV vehicles that NYSERDA and New York State are putting forward. The Charge Ready New York is rebates for creating uh, um, electric vehicle stations. The state is taking very seriously this issue of the chicken and the egg as it relates to um, uh, electric vehicles. And they're saying, okay, we're going to provide the chargers. We're going to provide the infrastructure. Nobody's going to drive away from home in this state and be worried that they're not going to find a place to charge up. We're going to provide workplace charging station tax credits. All of this is not surprisingly creating a significant market for companies who are in the charging space or along the supply chain for the charging space. Um, also rebates for plug-in electric cars. And uh, I work with a number of municipalities who are designing zoning codes now to require uh, that, char that par larger parking lots include electric vehicle charging opportunities. The State Public Service Commission is looking at new rules to energize the market as well, if you'll excuse the pun. Um, the truck voucher incentive program is also in the same vein looking for incentives for alternative fuel trucks. This is an area which was slowed down by some of the diesel pollution issues. It is now picking up speed again with new technologies. And again, there's great opportunity for the European companies to participate. Uh, turning to the next slide, smart grid opportunities. New York has a fairly low percentage, interestingly enough, of advanced metering infrastructure. This is largely due to the fact that New York City has very little sub-metering. Um, for a long time, sub-metering was really discouraged. You basically got electric and gas as part of your rent. And only in recent time are we seeing um, individual meters on apartments, uh, specifically in the New York area. But even across the state, AMI has really been slow to be uh, installed. As a result, we're seeing a lot of opportunity now in the smart grid space. And these are essential for the state to meet its DER implementation goals and to meet its GHG reduction goals. 
So there's $35 million currently available for NYSERDA for projects that will help integrate distributed energy resources. There's money available for microgrids and in particular solutions that are designed to help uh, economically challenge communities, reduce their cost, and take participation in some of the, the, the green growth that's going on. We have some wonderful uh, test projects that Con Edison has done, some other projects. All these have been incentivized with uh, higher rates. This, this presentation was designed to give you an opportunity of just, a, just some of what's going on in just one state. Obviously, there are other states as well that we work in um, that uh, are doing a lot of work. Uh, for a long time, uh, Hudson Russ has been uh, working with the European and other companies to establish, and we can help you with any aspect, not only with the contacts and with the contracts and all of that, but we really uh, understand the industries that you're in, and we know how to help you succeed in them. We'd be honored to be your partner, and I look forward to uh, asking, uh, answering um, questions. The last slide has our contact info. I know the group is going to make these slides available to um, everybody on the phone because I know there's a lot of information that's been um, uh, a lot of information that's been uh, in these slides. Please feel free to follow up with us and ask us anything that uh, we can provide. Look forward to answering questions, and I look forward to meeting you in September. Thanks a lot, Dan, for your very clear presentation and for your energy. Uh, we will now um, have the pleasure to listen to Steve from uh, Niserda. Uh, who will uh, present uh, us the, its funding uh, programs uh, available for uh, uh, many projects to assist uh, the state in combating climate change. Uh, Steve, you can maybe already uh, begin. I will try to put just your, your logo on the screen. Terrific. Well, well thank you. Um, and, and thanks, Dan. That was, uh, it was great. Um, uh, talk about uh, New York State. So I, I will try not to repeat the things that Dan has already spoken about and, and focus more on innovation and how we can help companies. Um, as you've heard, New York State is definitely open for business and um, our goal at NYSERDA, and by the way, New York, NYSERDA stands for the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Um, so our, our goal, we think about reduction of greenhouse gases, and, and when we think about innovation, we think about um, clean energy technology. So not just clean tech broadly, but more specifically clean energy. And that could be um, done in a lot of ways. That's about renewables. It's about uh, reducing the amount of energy required to accomplish certain tasks. Um, and, and just as creative as you can be, uh, showing how you can accomplish that, that's something that we're very interested in. Um, the, the inventions that will help to accomplish that, whether they're products or services or a combination, uh, don't have to be developed in New York State. Um, they just have to benefit New York State. Um, so companies like yours may be thinking about the New York State as um, getting a foothold in the U.S. or in North America uh, and then branching out from there, and that's something that um, we are very interested in. If it can solve our problems, um, then, then we would absolutely like you to come and, and help us to do that um, and buy the solutions. So without going over all of the items uh, that NYSERDA does, and, and we spend, you know, a pretty fair amount of money on everything from, you know, you've heard, um, incentives for EVs, and we're, we're doing uh, EV charging and uh, multifamily buildings and all those sorts of things. Um, we, we do focus on four major areas in innovation, and those are renewables and energy storage, smart buildings, smart grid, and mobility. Um, and we're going to do some work uh, in the near future with carbon capture as well. And those are the big areas. If there was something that was um, interesting and, and could reduce uh, greenhouse gases, it could be something we, we would look at, uh, and we actually have a fund for that also. Um, so um, in all these places, we could potentially provide financing. But before I talk about that, um, we spend, over the next 10 years, we're planning to spend $800 million on innovation. That definitely includes money, but it also includes a lot of the services, which to many companies could be as valuable or perhaps more valuable um, than investments. 
And, and those services include um, accelerators that we fund, incubators um, that are throughout uh, New York State and, and are extremely beneficial to fast growth companies. Uh, we have what's called an entrepreneur in residence program. So we have um, over 40 mentors all around New York State. They focus on areas that are the kinds of things that are important to fast growth companies, including um, strategy, how to get an investment, um, uh, sales, marketing, um, and, and a variety of other kinds of areas. Um, to, and with our goal of helping to build a company that's moving very quickly. So our, our, our goal is, you know, and, and the companies that we focus on are companies that want to sell not one or two or three or four or 10 and, and make, you know, $100,000 or 100,000 euros, but rather we want a company to come in and sell hundreds or thousands or millions, um, and not just in New York State, but all across uh, the U.S. Um, and, and hopefully globally as well. If you're successful and you're doing very well and you can sell uh, your products at a reasonable price in New York State, then that makes us successful as well. Um, so when, when we think about New York State, um, New York City, everybody knows about New York City, of course, an enormous urban area, and that's great. We think about other areas which potentially could be even easier to get into, at least initially, than New York City. And those include cities like Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, White Plains, Yonkers, and others. And uh, those are places that we could potentially help with. Um, so going back to, uh, you know, what, what we're spending on, you know, as I mentioned, we have a variety of these programs that can uh, to help you if you are a fast growth company. Um, but we also do provide uh, the money. And if you are interested in looking at um, what where we are uh, putting investments, um, you can Google NYSERDA and P-O-N-S, so PONS, P-O-N-S. And if you do that, you will see uh, current funding opportunities and look at what fits there. Um, or, or, or if you're a good fit for those current funding opportunities, you would be asked to provide what's called a concept paper, which is a four-page paper. And in that, you would talk about what you can do to solve the problems that uh, we are talking about in those ponds, which are like uh, requests for proposals. And then you would, um, that you would send that in. Uh, if that's accepted, we would ask you for a full proposal. Uh, you would show us how you can match the funds uh, that we potentially could provide, and we provide everything from you know, 50,000 to in the millions. Uh, and um, and if it's accepted, then uh, we would create a contract, and there would be milestones, uh, and and we would accept uh, expect you to do something in New York State. Um, as you've heard, we don't send money overseas for for you know focusing there, but but rather something that is going to be beneficial to New York State. So we work with um, startup companies that are usually pre-Series B, but we also work with companies that have, um, you know, you might not call yourself a startup, but you are bringing something to New York State that has not been here before. You may be wanting to demo something, and if it's successful in that demo with perhaps money or some services that we help you provide, um, then maybe New York State and, and companies or, or the public sector would want to adopt it. Um, and, and you could potentially show that to other states as well. Um, some of the places that we do provide, as I mentioned, there are those ponds. We also are, um, New York State has, uh, I don't want to say controls, but, but we um, work uh, very closely with the National Offshore Wind Consortium, of, as you heard, which is in New York State. Um, we have something called 76 West, and you can look this kind of thing up where we provide up to a million dollars in a grant and uh, companies from Europe frequently will apply for that. And if you're willing to move to New York State and do a lot of work here, then, then that's uh, an opportunity for you. We have something called um, uh, Clean Tech Venture Exchange, which can help to provide C-level executives from the U.S. if you need uh, folks like that. And, and there's no cost to these kinds of things. Um, we have uh, money for novel business models. So perhaps you don't necessarily have a, a hardware or product, but you have a new way of financing um, or getting the products into the marketplace. And we would, um, we would help with that uh, financially. 
Um, and, and we do want to introduce you to companies for a first sale in the U.S. as well. So that, that's something that we would work on. So that's about it. Um, you're certainly uh, welcome to contact me if you have uh, any questions. I'll answer questions also at the end of the uh, presentation. Thanks a lot, Steve, for, for this presentation. Many uh, opportunities and uh, partnership possible for, for innovative SMEs and, uh, and other companies. Um, we will now have the, the pleasure uh, to uh, listen to Nancy from uh, World Climate Limited. Uh, Nancy will present us the Horizon 19 uh, conference. Uh, Nancy, the floor uh, is yours. Hello, and thank you so much for all of the great information moving forward. My name is Nancy Bruton. I'm the Marketing Manager for World Climate Limited. We are pleased to be partnering with the U.S. Matchmaking Mission, thanks to ECQI and Smart City Tech for the opportunity. Today, I'm going to introduce you guys to the opportunities for European SMEs to network and pitch at Horizon 19. Your organization is going to benefit from our network's unique position, knowledge and relationships with key stakeholders in the clean tech in the northeastern United States to help facilitate access to relevant project owners and corporate buyers for European clean tech companies. A little bit about us um, and our partners. World Climate Limited is a European-based organization focused on collaborations globally between the private and public sectors. We're a leading advisor and event developer in the field of climate action and green business generation having consulted the Danish government in coalition building and the development of clean energy investment forms, the Dubai government in developing its brand for a greener future, UNDP and the World Bank in creation of the investment COP and other government institutions. We're presented, um, presenting this event in sponsorship with the Northeastern Clean Energy Council and founding sponsor, the Massachusetts Clean Energy Sector. Their networks are dedicated to building business and enhancing the success of clean energy projects and um, continuing to grow our business relationships. The success of the First Horizon Summit in 2018 saw nearly 1,000 participants, over 50 sessions and pitches, over 150 global top tier speakers, networking, sharing best practices and forward thinking ideas to accelerate clean economy initiatives and develop transformational projects. So, so we're really excited to bring this event back and host it in Boston. In exciting news, um, the Hickey and Associates Global Innovation Hub report this year identified Boston, our host city, as the number one global performer in innovation report analyzed key factors that create the ideal economic environment and ecosystem for innovation, including creation of learning and collaborative environments, location strategies, attracting talent, as well as venture capital in a city. So our adjacency to major institutions, organizations, and the energy sector puts us in a great position for hosting startup scale-ups, SMEs, um, and beyond. Innovation in particular through our international partnerships and collaboration is widely regarded as essential to progressing our clean energy transition. Um, Horizon 19 is going to unite world leading clean energy innovators and thinkers in what is now recognized as the top global innovation city. Um, some topics that we're going to discuss is how to modernize the grid to accelerate a clean and smart energy future, how to create sustainable cities through technologies, how to innovate the low carbon economy of the future, our program is going to explore leading approaches for the clean economy with top industry leaders and innovators, collaboratively discussing key issues and solutions. Horizon is going to have five main components. It's an integrated summit with keynotes, plenaries, and discussions, a showcasing of solutions in an interactive networking area, matchmaking and networking through a custom online app and online partnership platforms, pitch arena with startups, innovative, innovators, solution providers, and project leaders, and side events including workshops, product launches, cocktail receptions, and ceremonies, and more. So just a quick look at our program model. These are some of the um, programs designed across topics represented by industries um, globally. And I also included, here you can see um, the schedule in terms of our program and um, see that there's definitely some fits for all everything ranging from transportation, industry leadership, sustainable production, and more. Um, I would also make note that our program is available at horizon19.org. 
Um, and you can sign up for our newsletter there if you want updates as that program is getting further developed based on input from our industry partners. Who you're going to meet at Horizon is you're looking to explore new market opportunities and create business partnerships will provide a dynamic and impactful platform for stakeholders and partnerships um, across all of these different sectors that we discuss. Um, there's key strategies with prominent companies such as NG, National Grid, and more. And I'd um, also mention that we have a number of municipalities registering right now, more and more coming on board every day and many of them are smart cities nationwide. So um, that current list is growing and we're making sure that there's going to be the right partners to connect you guys to with your um, goal to grow your European companies forward. As for matchmaking, um, custom meetings are focused on getting customers, suppliers, and financiers together across many sectors. We use a custom Whova matchmaking app that allows you to create a profile at the event to post messages and questions, book meetings with relevant stakeholders, create events, and access program and event details such as programs and sessions. And there is the opportunity through coming to Horizon to pitch, um, co-organizing, pitching, and matchmaking. Um, this year's pitch area is located in the center of our networking space, giving it maximum visibility and scope to reach. Um, pitches happen during networking breaks, and um, members of your mission are given the opportunity to, to pitch. It's a 15-minute session, and we're absolutely happy to expand on that as um, people come on board and have interest. I mentioned the app. Here's a little bit more details about it. Um, the app allows you to mobilize potential buyers, solutions providers, and other stakeholders to participate in events. Um, but there's a limited pre-screening and facilitating via the app um, to meet our attendees and um, to network with relevant project owners. And we send an email to our participants several weeks out with all of the internal instruction manuals to get set up so that you can utilize this resource to the best of your ability while at Horizon. So in conclusion, Horizon is an event that um, gives you the opportunity to meet and network with these Northeastern businesses and beyond. Um, it allows you to deliver your business objectives, create new partnerships, enter new markets, conserve existing relationships, and promote your solutions. So we're really excited to invite you guys all to join. I'm going to show my contact information, but I'll make sure that everyone gets it as well. Uh, Nancy, for your presentation, uh, uh, it's now uh, very clear for all of us. Um, the last presentation now with uh, Jack from uh, Enrich, uh, who will present us uh, the soft landing uh, uh, of uh, Enrich. Uh, Jack, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. I've shared. I'll click share my screen, so I'm waiting to see if it'll. It'll come up. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Excellent. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, yep. So I am Jack Hinkle, and I'm rep I work at the International Business Innovation Association, based in in Orlando, Florida, in the United States. But we're part of the um, Enrich in the USA, which is the European Network of Research and Innovation Centers and Hubs. Project. This is a, a Horizon 2020 funded project with the goal of um, supporting promising and um, uh, uh, high-growth potential European companies that are looking to come to the U.S. and explore the U.S. for commercialization and market opportunities. Um, so these are a couple of the aims of Enrich in the USA. Um, we provide custom services, trainings, uh, matchmaking meetings to show some of the services. But really, we want to become the network to support European innovators and entrepreneurs who are looking to come to the U.S. and, and succeed. Um, and that includes connecting with missions uh, just, just like this one and supporting some of the great work and the great efforts that they're doing here. And I'll describe some of those a little bit in a second if I can advance. Um, then just a real quick background on the Enrich Network. So there's nine total partners across Europe and the U.S. participating. Um, so MBIA on the left, we have a network of 
but we have a worldwide network of incubators, entrepreneurship centers, accelerators that are members of NBIA. And ABN is based in Europe, um, and they're a, a network of European business incubators, um, but largely European. They have some others, and so this is sort of the butterfly model where we connect the 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 the, the span of entrepreneurship support centers across the U.S. and Europe to really provide this pathway into the United States. And so part of what we do at MBIA is we have a soft landing certification. And so we work with incubators across the world. Um, it was in most, many in the United States that have particular programs and interest in supporting international companies. Um, and we actually have a certification program where we vet those incubators to make sure that they um, are providing the right programs and services for international companies. And so this is where um, an incubator in the U.S. might be, um, they have a particular um, part of their program set aside for international companies. So um, if you come to the U.S. and you decide that you want to, for this mission, you want to more permanently locate in, in the U.S., um, in Boston or in New York or in, um, or in maybe even you know, other areas of the country, these are, this is an incubator network that really supports and is there for those follow-on at a long-term um, support of helping you uh, really establish and get going in the U.S. and connect to local ecosystems. Uh, the backbone of the Enriched Network, um, the two red circles there are two centers that we have and two of the, the biggest markets and the most important kind of innovation markets in the U.S., the so ones in Silicon Valley on the West Coast, and we actually do have a center, and I'm an Enriched USA Center in Boston, and that's what the red circle is there on the East Coast, and so we connect with the local ecosystem. We, um, for and, and for CTI, we'll be um, and, the, and this mission will be um, connecting into Boston um, to see if there are any other, um, you know, beyond the, the kind of the amazing program that Horizon 19 offers, if there's ways to help connect for individual meetings or um, other events um, outside of, um, kind of outside the, the normal hours of the conference um, and also in New York. So each of the other icons throughout the country, these are actual locations of existing landing hubs we have that are part of the Enrich Network or that will be coming online very soon. Um, to support the English program. So these are all, again, incubators around the U.S., incubators and accelerators that support European um, companies looking to come into the U.S. market. Um, and so this is really kind of the backbone of the English program and all the services that we offer is this, this physical network located around the country, around the U.S. With a heavy presence in Boston, we actually have this, the center in Boston, and we also have two different landing hubs in Boston um, to support companies looking to internationalize. Um, and then in New York, um, I know Steve, and I sort of had mentioned, you know, um, even outside the, the New York City, there's Buffalo, um, one of our soft landing organizations. It's a landing hub within Rich is the Buffalo Niagara Medical Campus, and so we're connected. Um, we're trying to work through our network to connect both of those to really um, bring some exciting uh, meetings and events um, as part of this mission. Um, so the, this is how we, this is how Rich us in Rich, how we, how we um, sort of, we've looked at the journey through the different types of programs and services. It's, you know, there's services focused on getting informed, so market studies, uh, learning more about particular markets, so whether that's, you know, clean tech, uh, robotics, uh, smart cities in the U.S., there's uh, services focused on getting connected, so matchmaking, working visits, uh, getting going, so these are more kind of week-long immersion program, boot camps, innovation tours, and get growing is the soft landing services and some of the, the services support um, you as you really move forward in, in establishing a presence in the United States. And um, and as participating in this mission, um, you know, a, a lot of these UBLs work to participate in, in some of these follow-on services, um, definitely either through the mission or, or even afterwards. Um, and so in particular, you know, part of what we're doing for uh, through the network is connecting with um, trying to really enhance programming and, 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 and create some um, events around um, robotics. So connecting uh, robotics stakeholders in both New York um, and Boston um, to participate and to come and, and, and work with and get an opportunity to do some, have some additional networking and pitching opportunities with the mission. So these are whether they're accelerated like, um, like mass robotics, in Boston, or there's some new programs around robotics that we're um, trying to con we're connecting with in New York, and part of that's through the um, to the the, the BNS, which is the Business Incubator Association of New York. So um, we're really trying to spread out the network to bring to bring the right contacts to New York and to Boston to um, support this mission and give and give all the participants really the best opportunities while they're in the U.S. Um, 
I know we're running short on time, so there's a number of upcoming services. You can they'll all be listed on the website coming out. One thing I did want to point out on the website, uh, we have thematic research studies, and so two of these are actually related, and you can download these now. Um, might be a good idea before you come to the U.S. So these are all focused on the U.S. market. Um, so one for connected automated driving might be interested for the smart cities uh, companies, and then we have one for renewable energy. Um, there will be another one coming out um, in the next four to five months on smart cities as well. So these are available to download from our site right now. That'd be good um, research and good, a good preparation for the visit to the U.S. So um, with that, you feel free to email me, and here's all the contact information for Enrich, and the best way to learn about what's coming up next. Thank you. Thanks a lot, a lot uh, Jack, for your, for your presentation. Uh, very interesting. Um, for sure, after all this presentation, we will uh, have some uh, questions, uh, and we will have now uh, some time for this. Uh, and for a week from uh, the EC2I delegation and uh, the Cluster Clean uh, in Denmark, we'll uh, animate the, the Q&A uh, session. For a week, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, I need, obviously we need to thank all of our American partners for dialing in this morning here from the East Coast in the United States. Thank you so much for the presentations and for your collaborations. This is uh, really, really interesting. I think there's a lot of good stuff going on in the U.S. Uh, bear in mind that this consortium of the European Clean Tech Clusters, we were there in New York last year. One of the lessons learned for us was really that in order to, to succeed, we cannot do everything based here in Europe. We need strong American partners. It's so important for us that we have strong uh, U.S. partners that we can trust, that we can collaborate with, and that can also benefit from all of this. So we're very grateful that you're in here on this call, and we're very grateful that you will also, uh, most of you, be uh, there in New York and Boston when we go, to, go over there in September. So we'll very, we, we look very much forward to that. So thanks a lot for that. Um, thanks also to all, all of the companies on the call here. Obviously, we do this for you. Uh, let me just repeat, maybe it's been said before, this is a nonprofit for us. Uh, we've received money from the European Commission to do all of this, to export um, innovation to the United States. We ha I know you have a lot of good products and services that could be extremely relevant for, for the American organizations, the city challenges, the companies, the corporations, et cetera. Now it's just for us to facilitate this, and, and, and that's why we want you to, to go over there to the United States for this, uh, for this matchmaking mission. We think it's, it's really good. So that's also why we've done everything we could to make this um, relevant for you, not just the B2B meetings in New York City, but also a lot of other things. There is the side visits for the robotics. There is the uh, extensive networking with all of the other SMEs. There's also the visit to Boston, to Horizon 19, I think, Nancy gave a real good presentation about the, the Horizon 19 conference. This is the second annual con conference of, of this kind of sort in, in Boston. Uh, a lot of opportunities there as well to, uh, to engage with, um, with, the, with the local people in Boston, uh, with the local um, businesses and, and, and corporations, and a lot of B2B matching as well. So we've done everything we can to, to make this as, as good a trip as possible. Um, now we go to the Q&A session. Is there anybody on the call here? I, I have, obviously, I have a number of questions, and I also want to um, pinpoint some of you companies out there to, to, uh, to provoke you a bit and to, to try to ask some good questions to our American partners. But uh, anyone out there initially now who has a question to start off with, then please go ahead for American partners. And please unmute yourself on this little red icon that you, that you can see on the participant list if you want to talk. If not, then I definitely have a question here for uh, a certain Mr. Ole Pukol from Denmark. Ole, are you there on the, on the, on the call? Ole? Yes, I'm here. Yeah, two Sorry. words, Ole. You, you, you've heard a lot of the presentations. We also talked o earlier today here in Denmark. What do you think about the presentations, and do you think this look uh, interesting for what you have to offer, and what do you have to offer remotely? What, what, is the, what do you do, and, and how do you see it from your side? I think the presentations were very insightful and very interesting. Definitely, there's a big market for European companies to go to the U.S. with all 
um, with all the interest in green tech, but also to do a serious, uh, to do something serious about um, the climate. Um, I'm not sure about the technologies in the US uh, versus uh, Europe, if we are um, better or more advanced or whatever. But anyhow, that's a big potential. It's a, it's a large, we see it as a large, homogeneous market and with a lot of potential. What is it that Ramoni offers in two words, Ole? What What's your product and service? Yeah, sorry. We have a patented um, Korean solution from IoT sensor to um, artificial intelligence in the cloud. And we are looking into managing the technical installations inside buildings so that you can reduce your energy uh, usage and, and thereby save on your energy bills. So, so that was um, in two lines, not two words. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Okay, um, Bill. When you hear this kind of presentation, uh, this very short <laughs> uh, thing, it, could be, this be relevant to you for you to to collaborate with um, Bill Young uh, when you when you listen to this? I mean, is there something that that you would find interesting? This what what Ola just said about the sensors? Yeah, for sure. And I think and Tar can jump into if he wants, but um, you know. This uh, technology, of course, a lot of greenhouse gas emissions are coming from uh, commercial buildings and mm. uh, and uh, the and other structures. Uh, but also, if you look at uh, some of the incentives that are in New York and beyond, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure it's um, you know an established uh, company. It, it, um, uh, it, you've you've probably done some research in the U.S. and so on and so forth. So. Uh, you know, would need to learn a little bit more about it, but on the surface, it's uh, interesting. And I think that I just want to point out that um, we would um, welcome conversations with anyone who either wants to learn more or who feels they're in a position to uh, to internationalize and you know, kind of uh, access the U.S. market. Uh, and we're open to uh, to all those conversations as part of our partnership with EC2I and SCT. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Just for your information, we know that, that Bridge Innovation Partners, as you've seen in the presentation by Tarek and Bill, they have a lot of experience in this. We have some templates uh, that, that, they have, that Bill and Tarek has prepared. We really would like you to, to fill out those templates uh, if you have an interesting product and, and you want to, to see how, um, how you think your uh, product or service uh, could could play out in the United States. It, this is a cost-free exercise just to send it to Bill and Tarek. Uh, in that way, they will analyze these um, uh, templates and, and maybe give you a, <clears throat> a straightforward answer as of whether that there will be potential. Is that correct, Bill? I'm not overselling this right, right? No, not at all. I mean, I think it's like what we've learned through experience and through others' experiences is that uh, if we have some basic information, you know, when Tark talked earlier about the IAAS and that, yeah. that sort of bullseye looking thing, um, you know, we're not here to say, let's take whatever you're trying to do and make it work in the U.S. And that's part of what I meant by talking about the, the partnership, that we look at it critically together uh, with uh, leaders uh, and owners in, these, in, in businesses and uh, look at it uh, not only if but when um, and so I think that by going through a, a simple questionnaire is uh, for us all to get on the same page and at least yeah. to begin the conversation and uh, so so we can make good uh, critical uh, decisions yeah Awesome. I think this is a good um, good suggestion so so afterwards we will send out material with links to this. Um, to this webinar, but also links to the templates. So you can fill out the templates, contact Bill and Tarek, and then there, there can be an early assessment. We all know not all leads lead to a specific business, but this is an early start, so it, it will be good help for everyone. Um, let me just remind you that obviously we, we also um, uh, collaborating with Ecotech Quebec in Montreal, who is joining this call. And we're very happy to have a lot of people from Canada on this call as well. And I see Maurice Malcar. Et vous là, Maurice? Maurice Malcar? Allô? Maurice? Oui. Oui, 
Excellent. Uh, Maurice, in English, um, first of all, yes, thanks, for joining <laughs> thanks, thanks for joining. I, I see you represent the, the company TSI Services Management. Can you, in two words, say what this is about and, and, and how do you, uh, are you um, incentivized to join this matchmaking mission in the United States together with, with all of us? Yes, uh, we are a Canadian company with offices in the U.S. and uh, we have a, a grid resiliency solution that enables uh, large prosumers to contribute to uh, stabilizing and replenishing the grid. In other words, uh, the future pipeline, if it's to be clean, has to be electrical and the participants have to share into the mission of uh, maintaining the resiliency of the grid. We're firm believers that uh, the new policies regarding uh, clean energy have to start by reducing the production of uh, dirty or carbon-based uh, energy by uh, enticing large prosumers to use storage or EV chargers, which uh, have connected EVs that can participate mm -hmm. in uh, generating savings for the, the, themselves as well as helping the grid when, when it's in trouble. And we have the technology to do that. Okay. Thanks a lot, Maurice. Dan Spitzer, what do you think about this? Thank you, Maurice. Dan Spitzer, what do you think about this uh, this product that, that Maurice Malka, uh, taking into account what you what you explained about the the, the grid situation in um, in uh, the New York State and, and the Northeast? Any any perspectives, Dan? Absolutely, there's a market for that uh, product, in my opinion. When you look at what's going on with microgrids, when you look at what's going on from moving from the utility-centric, throw the electrons down the line and get them there at a certain voltage system, which we've had for the last 100 years, everything is dependent on superior um, abilities, not only in the software, but also in the sensors to know exactly what's going on and the ability of the components to talk with each other. The Internet of Things is really what enables a lot of the smart grid possibilities to go forward. I think this type of product is um, likely to find greater and greater opportunity, not only as the utilities are incentivized and receive revenue from the various states through their decoupling mechanisms to in employ these type of uh, devices, but through the private sector, uh, when you look at what just happened in New York with the Hudson Yards, which is an incredibly energy efficient set of buildings, the largest real estate development in the world, very energy efficient, and they use a lot of these type of products to carry out what they do. This is a product that, to me, is one of the of the future that is just simply going to be required in any new construction and is essential to making retrofits possible, but is also uh, essential to um, the successful DER integration into the grid. Awesome. Uh, absolutely. If I can comment further, we are also very involved with the European clusters because Canada and Europe have a free trade agreement. And as such, we can participate in Eureka labeled uh, missions. So we do have uh, a pre-qualified Eurogia 2020 in which all European companies that have a pilot project to propose would be welcome to join uh, our mission in testing those technologies anywhere in the world, provided they can contribute to the solution. Again, it's important to understand that Montreal is the uh, international base for deep learning AI, and those sensors would have the ability to come up with smart contracts, and therefore the trading will be seamless with digital fluid currencies, which we call power coins, not to be confused with bitcoins, uh, because uh, there is no room for intermediaries. Uh, sorry for the bankers, but this is a business that's uh, real time, and there is no room for sitting on the money. Yeah. Okay. And Thank you. you make a very good point too about um, we've had an office in Toronto for many years for, and this is one of the well, uh, industries that we serve. The Europeans going first to Canada, 
and especially where the systems are more uh, compatible, to be honest. And um, the free trade agreement is another layer on top of that that makes entry into Canada first. We work with a lot of European companies that are actually uh, uh, based in Toronto and Montreal to come into the U.S. having first succeeded in those markets. Yes, absolutely. So if anybody is interested, please contact me at tsi echo We have been approved on the project outline, and we are preparing the full project proposal for two European, Canada, Europe projects. One is for uh, energy uh, to be able to build the clean tech of the future, and the second one is how to use 5G for this mission-critical real-time environment uh, so and that involves the UK with the University of Western Scotland okay thanks a lot Maurice and thanks Dan for you're most welcome thank you thank you very much what we're going to do onwards is that we, we're going to ask the clusters responsibles to really um, um, to make the contact between you and the American partners so so let's go forward on uh, on this um, we have a really good question here, which was in the chat, and this is from Bernard Ginnan from Belgium. Uh, are you there on the call, Bernard? The Trade Commissioner for Wallonia, based at the Consulate of Belgium here in New York. Excellent. Hi, Bernard. Um, maybe this question could, could maybe be for uh, Steve Walk. Is that um, uh, from NYSERDA? I guess, I mean, what you're asking about is that uh, you say, can anybody comment on the public bidding process? How difficult are they? Do non-U.S. companies have a fair chance of entering winning? I think it's an extremely relevant question. Um, but, uh, yes, if I, if I may quickly, it's very, very tricky. I, I wrote a, a paper about that, and, and I had a hard time figuring it out. The Buy America, C-A, no N, applies only to subventions uh, by the public transportation, the FTA, Federal Transit Administration, or the FHWA, Federal Highway Administration, while the Buy American, with C-A-N, can be applied to all public market and biddings uh, in the U.S. And it's, it's a very, uh, uh, very tricky and hard problem to tackle because it, it has to do with the legislation, regulation, compliance, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like, if possible, to have an input about those public, because most of the uh, acquisitions for, uh, by the cities and states, of course, go through public bidding offerings. Yeah. Excellent question. Maybe Stephen Volk from... from uh, yeah, uh, I... I, I yeah, I'm happy to. Uh, so I, I don't know that it would be appropriate for me to discuss the federal uh, process, but um, with respect to innovation, I'm, I'm happy uh, in New York State, that is, uh, around clean energy, I'm happy to discuss that <clears throat> um, wrap quickly. Uh, so um, I, I, municipalities, um, certainly, you know, individual municipalities, um, we'll look at anybody who's bidding and they have their criteria will be laid out in their RFPs. Um, so I, I have, and I don't get that involved in the municipalities RFPs, although I have been a little bit, I have not seen that there's anything that would preclude companies uh, outside of the U.S. from bidding. Um, they obviously have to meet the criteria um, and, and, you know, um, and some of that may be having the ability to not only um, provide products but maintain them and things like that. So certainly, um, you know, there may be the necessity for a base in the U.S. or, or in the local area even. Um, so, um, and obviously pricing is always important. Um, with respect to the kinds of uh, things that we provide, um, the money, um, whether it's the 76 West competition or the ponds that I spoke about earlier, um, yeah, please do um, uh, take a look at those, and um, we're very interested in uh, folks coming and, you know, with, with um, inventions that uh, differentiate themselves from what is already in the U.S. and solve problems that we can't solve um, right now with what we have, um, or maybe can solve the problems uh, at a much lower price. 
So um, we're very interested. We do look at how it benefits New York State, and there are a variety of areas um, for that. Of, of course, it's um, meeting the criteria of the uh, PON or the RFP. Um, but um, we also think about jobs. Um, we think about um, you know some sort of a base um, in New York State, uh, and those things are beneficial. But um, most importantly, is that we believe that it's going to solve you know our greenhouse gas energy problems in New York State, and uh, and and you know you'll be able to do that and accomplish the goals that you set. So um, there there is, should be nothing that would should stop you from um, uh, from bidding and uh, and then coming here and, and help again helping solve the problems and and hopefully becoming you know economically very successful in doing that. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Thanks a lot, Simon, for for this very um, um, uh, good answer. I think it's it's a lot of good uh, um, reflections also in your answer. I mean that that what really matters is is not maybe not so much. Uh, where it comes from, but if we have the right technology, the right services, the right products that can come in and solve some specific um, uh, problems and and provide some answers to some of the challenges that, that then uh, then it's definitely possible to go forward with these solutions. So so that's 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 really good to hear, and that's also uh, why we go there and um, and why we think that this this is really well worth the effort. I think we're much beyond time now. Um, so maybe um, is somebody calling here. <laughs> uh, we're much beyond time now, uh, so maybe I think we should stop here. Unless there's any questions or final comments from anybody on the call, um, and then maybe I'll leave the floor to uh, to Paul, who can say a few words about what will be the next steps. Obviously, there's going to be an email with with the presentations, with the link to this webinar that is being recorded, but also about the next steps, how to join this. It's going to go through the individual clusters and all of the Canadians, of course. You're going to contact Victoria and Gabriel from Ecotech Quebec and, um, and, uh, and all of the other ones on the call. You, you, you need to call, uh, contact your local uh, cluster participant in order to, to join this trip. Um, as I mentioned, we've done everything we could to make this um, an interesting value proposition as possible. We know this is not for free, obviously. It, it does cost some money. It also costs some time. But we think that if you go all the way to the U.S., we wanted to make a double matchmaking mission out of this. We want to make it well worth the effort. So, so that's why the program is uh, the way it is right now. So we really hope that you will join and also use all, all of our American partners who are on this call right now, asking them the questions uh, prior to the mission, see what are the opportunities, what do they need to do in order to get access to these challenges and opportunities? So, um, Paul Pico, I'll let you finish off this uh, this webinar. What yes, thank you. Thank, thank you. In fact, you have already said the, the most important. Uh, please, uh, if you are interested to to, to participate, contact uh, uh, the, the cluster, uh, uh, the best one for for your re region. And uh, of course, you you can also have all the information needed uh, on uh, the following uh, website. Uh, we have also some, uh, some media uh, links, uh, and uh, also last but not least. Uh, all the presentation of today will be uh, shared uh, to uh, SlideShare, and we will also uh, send to all the participants uh, the video, uh, the record, uh, record video uh, of uh, this webinar. So thanks again uh, to all the speakers, uh, for all the, the very good presentations, and also uh, thanks uh, to the participants. Without uh, this webinar, couldn't be. Uh, yes, that's it. Excellent. Okay, so thank you everyone. Thanks for joining in the U.S. and Canada, in Europe. Looking forward to further engagement with you and, and looking forward to hopefully, hopefully see all of you in September on the 16th to 20th in New York and Boston. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>